Welcome dogs, today we're talking gears, specifically spare gears and the Lewis bending equation. So the Lewis bending equation, if we go through Shigley's uh, mechanical engineering design book right here, allows us to determine a stress on the tooth of a gear. So if we look at the pictures here, you can see that this gear, this spur gear for example, there's a tangential load and a radial load. The Lewis bending equation treats it this gear as a inloaded cantilever beam. And the significance of this is if you can simplify it to this level, there's a, an equation that you can use to determine stress, which you can then use to determine margins of safety. So in this equation right here, there's very few terms. It's very simplistic. You have a tangential force, you have the diametral pitch, you have a face width, and then you have this Lewis form factor right here. So this is a factor you got to determine from tables or graphs. And so if we go through here, we see that this is a table that represents Lewis form factors for a gear with a pressure angle of 20 degrees that's full depth. And you can see here you have number of teeth and the Lewis form factor and you, the data is pretty spread out so if you're going to program uh, something in Excel or Python or whatever you use to determine the Lewis form factor for these different configurations what you're going to find is that uh, it's going to be you know quite amount of code to code this you'd basically put this in a matrix and interpolate between values for gears with different teeth it's not uh, real complicated to do that but uh, the goal here is to simplify it and to show you another method to do this so the method I'm going to show today is you're going to fit basically an analytical equation or best fit line to this data so if we go into Excel kind of have this already set up. What I've pulled into this is i pulled in uh, Lewis form factors for the corresponding number of teeth from this website right here. So if we go to this website, he's got a calculator that does some stuff, but we want to basically pull the data from this. So he's got graphs. So he's got 20 degree pressure angle spur gears and he's got 14 and a half degree pressure angle gears and he's got the data listed here so you can see here the data is spread out we're going to look at this 14 and a half pressure angle gear data because you can easily extend this to, to 20 degree we're just going to demonstrate it for 14 and a half so if we go to our Excel data here I went ahead and plotted that you can see the plot right here it's got the data number of teeth and then the Lewis form factors and uh, you know what we're going to do now is fit an equation to this an analytical solution and what you can find here is we have this function right here it's the reciprocal function this will be a good equation to use so if we go to if we go to Wolfram Alpha this is a good website you can graph different things on here it'll show basically images of the different types of graphs what you'll find here is say if we graph the reciprocal function it's gonna look something like this right that's not really what we're looking for but if we take the negative of that what you'll find is okay we have something down here that looks similar in nature to our data so what can we do to modify this we can put a constant in front of it so let's say 20 minus 1 divided by x and what you'll see is this curve moves up but it moves into the quadrant that we're looking for uh, that we've plotted in our graph in Excel so what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically take this constant and this constant and create variables and try to uh, basically fit our data by adjusting these two variables. So if we go to Excel again, this is the form of the equation we're using where X is actually in right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this using these constants A and B. So if I put 
this function in our best fit column here. I'm just going to do A plus B divided by the number of teeth. And I'm going to extend that down. Of course, I got to lock some variables here. You can see the, our equation right here is now plotted on the graph along with the data. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create our sum of relative error function right here because this is what we're going to minimize. So it's simply just going to be the absolute value of our data point minus our best fit point divided by our data point. And we convert that to a percentage. If we carry that down and we sum the errors, we get a value right here. So the sum of errors is 1,603%. So you can tell by this graph to the right, that's not very good fit anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get close. So let's just do um, just B right here. Let's make it 1.5, see what happens. Okay, it extended that down a little bit. So let's change this a little bit. So let's change this to 0.5. Okay, we overshot our data there. Let's change it to 0.3. Okay, 0.4. Check that out. Okay, so the goal here is to get our best fit line close to our data and then use solver to minimize our sum of errors. And so I'm going to adjust this a little more. Let's change this to negative two. Okay, so we're getting close there. So now I think it's close enough where we can use solver to fit our line to the data. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I click solver, we're going to make our objective basically the sum of our errors. So if I click that, I want to minimize that value by changing A and B. And if we solve it, we will see our graph update here. So let's solve. And basically, that's our optimized fit right there. So I'm going to keep the solution. These are the values we need to use in this equation to fit to our data and what this allows us to do if I didn't mention it earlier but say we have a 14 and a half pressure angle gear tooth that's got 128 teeth right so we don't have a specific data point for that so we could interpolate which we could do with a calculator or we can just put in 128 into our equation right here and we get our value instantly. It'll give us our Lewis form factor which we can use to determine stresses. And this will be later used later in our upcoming videos um, when we actually go through and do spur gear, spur gear to design. So that's why I'm showing this. But you can see the sum of errors right here. So we're within 1% on these. So this is a great fit. So our total error is 9%. So our best fit line is 9% off when it comes to the sum of errors, which is basically that'll fly with me in my book. So that's how you fit a reciprocal function to the Lewis form factor data points. And so uh, I thought that was pretty cool. That's why I wanted to show it today. Uh, this is a good strategy to use to fit any line to data in Excel anyway, so you can extend this to other applications. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Adios.